Wormholes, particle physics, extra dimensions. Are the wonders of so-called reality really what they appear to be? Or do we exist in an elaborate hologram? Is our universe the result of random activity or the result of intelligent design? If a creator was involved, can we discover him through our perception of divine order? This is Into the Multiverse with Josh Peck. I got tickets to the Air and Space Museum, but didn't go because there was nothing to see. I went to the Ark Encounter instead. Welcome to Into the Multiverse. I'm your host, Josh Peck, and in studio with me, my lovely, beautiful, pregnant wife, Christina Peck. How are Hi, you doing? Hi, I'm good. It's good to be back. Yeah, you were you were out for a little bit. We, Christina will be out of the office for a few weeks after the, after the baby's born, uh, so... We're going to record some programs ahead of time, so we'll be able to play those until you, until you get back. Until I get back. Exactly. Well, that's the beauty of Into the Multiverse, because we, uh, we don't deal with a whole lot of current event stuff. It, right. it's, it's pretty much more timeless programming. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you could watch these in five years, and it'll still be relevant. Uh, so we try, to, we try to make the show like that. Um, now, there might be some people who this is their first episode. Where, where can people find us online? All right. Well, first off, if it is your first time. Welcome into the multiverse. Uh, well, welcome to Into the Multiverse. You can find us online on youtube.com forward slash Into the Multiverse. You can also go to our Skywatch homepage and you can scroll down. There will be a picture um, on the right hand side of Josh and I and it says Into the Multiverse. You click on that. It will take you right to our YouTube channel. Uh, or you, if you have a Roku, Check us out on Roku on under the Skywatch TV channel. Yes, thank you very much. You're Today we're going to be talking about the Ark Encounter and the importance of science in Christianity. Uh, now, recently I was uh, able to um, do an investigation on the, the yeah. whole Ark Encounter thing with Derek and Sharon Gilbert. It was a lot of fun. We got a lot of great footage and uh, cool interviews, and um, it, it was a blast. But uh, I, I think now is a good time to tackle this topic because um, the way that we're going to record and, and, and air this, it's going to be during Preparedness month, month. And for those of you at home who aren't familiar, September is Preparedness Month. Uh, now, a lot of times... During Preparedness Month, we talk about how it's important to be physically prepared, you know, with extra food and stuff like that. But just as important as that, I think uh, it's important to be mentally and spiritually prepared. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And it's not to, and, and, you know, to clarify things with being prepared, it's not to bring fear or anything. It's just uh, anything ha can happen at any time. Yeah. I mean, a natural disaster of like a tornado or whatever. Wouldn't it be nice to have some extra things saved up? regardless. Well, there are people that survived uh, Hurricane Katrina because they yes. were prepared. Yep. So uh, it, it is it is good to be prepared. Um, now, in this episode, we're going to talk about the importance of science in Christianity. And this goes more along the lines of being uh, mentally and spiritually prepared. Yep. Uh, we've talked about a lot on the show that uh, science and technology is advancing at an exponential rate. Yes. And the more that happens, the more Christians are called on for answers. Mm -hmm. um, so this whole Ark Encounter thing was a really cool experience because it was it's, it's actually put on by Ken Ham of Answers in Genesis, uh, who uh, their their entire ministry does provide scientific answers yeah. to um, archaeology or uh, even geology. Uh, we'll actually be uh, looking at an interview that I did um, when I had a full beard. <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah. but yeah, it's 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 really important. Um, now, the actual Ark Encounter itself, it's, it's a life-size, two-scale replica of Noah's Ark in, in Kentucky. And again, it was, it's, it's put on by a Ken Ham of Answer, Answers in Genesis. Um, and it was, it was pretty cool. They uh, gave us a press release kit. It's a wooden box, um, which basically has some magazines, some in information, even a uh, flash drive with extra footage that I'll probably be using in this episode, uh, made out of wood, at least the, well, not the, the not, not the electronics, they're no. not made of wood, that wouldn't, but the, the housing, that wouldn't work at all. <laughs> yeah, the housing is made of wood, so that's pretty cool, um, and, uh, you know, it came, came with a magazine, uh, the uh, issue of uh, Answers, Building a Biblical Worldview. Uh, magazine and some pamphlets and things. Lots of uh, lots of good information. Um, now, because we're limited on time, because I do want to get to this interview, we won't have time to go through all of this. Uh, but just suffice to say, 
it um it, it was it was a lot of fun it was uh something i'll remember for the rest of my life um and it was really hot yeah <laughs> kentucky and the beginning of July, I can only imagine it being very hot. Exactly. <laughs> uh, oh, also, those at home might be wondering why they sent the host of, you know, or one of the hosts, host, hosts of Into the Multiverse to the Ark Encounter. Uh, I, I also work as a videographer for Skywatch TV, so I do uh, a lot of the camera work, uh, some of the infield camera work, uh, video editing for every episode of Skywatch TV and Into the Multiverse. So they, they, they keep me pretty busy, and I love it. We have I love many it. jobs here. Yeah. We're not just hosts. That's right. You're, you're a host. You're social media director so you, you got a lot of irons in the fire I too. I help with the magazine. Um, yeah. Write I, articles. I write and, and yeah so we, they keep us very busy. Yeah it's a lot of fun and uh, so I was ha I was happy to go it was it was a blast but yeah it was it was really really hot. Yes. Um, so uh, <laughs> it's actually funny I'll have to post the picture uh, here but um, uh, Derek and Sharon got a picture of me when Looking I was trying miserable. to, yeah, because <laughs> it was so it was so hot, but I was trying to get the camera going, and and it was crowded too. That that was one of the uh, things that surprised me was just how crowded just with the media that, yeah. that this was. I mean, it, it was lot. like you're in competition with the other videographers from all these other uh, um, ministries and news outlets and news agencies and stuff. You're like in competition for a spot, but uh, we were able to get uh, a, a shot of the ribbon cutting. So check this out. We support the mission, and we are proud to be the home of Weemstown. Uh, we, as Weemstown and Grant County, are proud to have the Ark Encounter as our home. We look forward to a great relationship with the Ark Encounter. <laughs> At this time, I will, on behalf of the city of Weemstown and the state of Kentucky, I would like to officially declare the Ark Encounter open. So at least we were able to get a shot of the ribbon cutting. That that was that was pretty cool. Um, I was uh, I was pretty close with Ken Ham there, uh, and the, the the whole experience was really cool. But w what I liked. Um, was I did an interview um, with uh, Dr. Andrew Snelling, who's actually a, a geologist. He's like a resident geologist of Answers in Genesis, and he has a lot of other, uh, just like anybody in ministry, you know, you yeah. have a lot of irons in the fire. But um, he, he talked a lot about the importance of science in Christianity, why it's important to be prepared to give an answer. Uh, you know, how, how can we still have faith when we live in uh, a scientific world, you know, in a, in, in, that has a materialist mindset. So I was able to talk with um, Dr. Andrew Snelling about how he got into this, uh, why he continues to do it. Um, and he, uh, he had a lot of pretty cool things to say. <laughs> yeah, I remember watching it. It was it was very cool. Very interesting. It's good to have have things like this out out there. Yeah, I, I think they should do more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, without further ado, we'll cut to uh, the interview with uh, Dr. Andrew Snelling. Hi, I'm Josh Peck with Skywatch TV here with Dr. Andrew Snelling, a geologist uh, actually on staff here at uh, Answers in Genesis. Um, how, how'd you get started in this? Actually, I became interested in this issue when I was a boy. I, I first started picking up rocks when I was nine years of age and uh, then I became a Christian and my parents were concerned about my understanding of the rocks that I was learning at school and also I started reading university textbooks because I was convinced I wanted to be a geologist and they introduced me to the Genesis flood book by doctors Whitcomb and Morris and uh, so I read that and became convinced and then I after doing my first degree in geology I went on to do my PhD it was during my first year in my PhD that I met Ken Ham and at that stage he was still a school teacher and he hadn't set up the ministry uh, but when he when he resigned from the ministry, uh, resigned from school teaching to set up the, the ministry in Australia, uh, my wife and I supported him. And then when I finished my PhD and had some experience in the mining industry, I resigned and went to work with him at the end of 1983 in Brisbane, Australia. And I uh, worked with Ken Ham for three years before we exported into the United States. And they tell me that the United States hasn't been the same since. 
but uh, I worked in Australia in creation ministry for nearly 15 years and then I was uh, almost nine years working for the Institute for Creation Research when they were based in San Diego and I got to, got to meet Dr. Henry Morris and at that time he was wanting to see an update of his book The Genesis Flood with Dr. Whitcomb written and uh, he asked me if I would work on that and uh, I ended up doing that and uh, even when I came to work for, back to work with Ken Ham on, in 2007 to be their director of research and to set up a research department for Answers in Genesis here in Northern Kentucky, I was still finishing that book and uh, we sell that book, Earth's Catastrophic Past, uh, Geology, Creation and the Flood. And so that's, that's my history which brings me to this point that uh, this has been a vision of Ken and others and uh, we're really excited about this ark and the exhibits in the ark that we can present to challenge people about the truth of God's word. Amen. And it's definitely phenomenal. I mean, what 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 a uh, what, what a great attraction. And how um, y usually we the world wants to tell us that the more you get into science, the more you're going to learn that God isn't real and evolution is real and all that. How has geology uh, helped in proving that false? Well, we've got to understand there's people get confused about science. What is science? Uh, science is about the things you can touch and taste and see. And so a geologist will pick up rocks and minerals and we classify rocks and we, we can chemically analyze minerals and I can go out tomorrow and pick up the same rocks and make the same observations. But when it comes, I can, I can find a fossil and, and I can describe it. Yes, this is a fossil fish and it looks like a fish that's alive today. But when it comes to questions about how did that fish get fossilized, that's a question about the past, which is different from observable present day science. That's, that's forensic science or historical science. And, and, and it's the same as the um, CSI, you know, cr crime scene investigators, who are, that weren't at the scene of the crime. They're trying to collect the evidence in the present and find out, figure out what happened in the past. Now, when they go to the courtroom, who's going to be, who's going to sway the judge and the jury more? The scientists who weren't there, or the witnesses who saw the guy pull out the gun and shoot the person? And so. Um, we as Christians say, look, we have a reliable eyewitness, God himself who created, who never tells lies, who knows everything, who never makes mistakes, and he has given us this written history. And why is that history important? It's because it's the history of Jesus Christ. It, it connects him to Adam, and that means that Jesus is our, our blood brother. We're, we're related to the same ancestor, Adam, which is important. That means that he could die for me because he, he was a man. And so that history matters, which includes not only creation, but also the flood and why it happened. And therefore, as a geologist, I'm interested in what the eyewitness account says about the past. And that, that's what distinguishes me from a secular geologist because he's not interested in what God's Word says he's only interested in what he can see today and so he says look a limestone forms slowly and gradually let's go to the ocean floor where lime is accumulating today and and it might take a thousand years to accumulate a fraction of an inch and he says that's the way limestones form well, underneath our feet here, right here in northern Kentucky, underneath this ark, and again over in Missouri, you've got limestone layers, and they're chock full of marine fossils, of, of shellfish and corals. In fact, 95% of the fossil record are, are actually shallow water marine creatures. But you know what? Where do they live? Down by the ocean floor. Hey, but, but we're up on the continent. We're a thousand, we're 500 miles from the ocean here and a thousand feet above sea level. How did they get there? Why aren't all the marine fossils buried on the bottom of the ocean floor? Why are the marine fossils in the mountains and up on the continents? In fact, you know, I can go to the Grand Canyon and I can find a layer in the Grand Canyon near the bottom of the sequence with marine fossils in it. And I can, and it's on an erosion surface, I can trace that layer all the way across and I can see it in Missouri, in road cuts in Missouri. I can see the same layers up in Wisconsin. I can see the same layers across northern Africa, across Europe, the same layers with the same fossils. The chalk beds in, 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 um, in Kansas, just near, near Missouri, uh, 
The chalk beds are full of marine fossils, but also got dinosaur fossils. They've got pterosaurs, which are flying reptiles. They've got fossil fish, 14 foot long, with other fish undigested in their stomach, and a chalk is a type of limestone. You can't tell me that that took millions of years to, to be buried and fossilised. The present is not the key to the past. We don't feed dead fish on the bottom of the ocean waiting to be buried and fossilised over thousands of years. They rot and decay away. So these, these limestone layers had to accumulate very rapidly and the Bible gives us exactly the event. It says that all the high hills under the whole of the heaven were covered by water. The earth opened up. Water came gushing from inside the earth. The, the fountains of the great deep broke open. Water shot up into the atmosphere. Rain fell on a global scale for 40 days and 40 nights so that all the high hills under the whole of the heaven were covered. And so all creatures died that weren't on board the ark. And so based on that, I would expect to find billions of dead things buried in rock layers laid down by all over the earth. What do I find? Billions of dead things called fossils buried in rock layers laid down by all over the earth. And the layers show that they were buried rapidly. The fossils show that they were buried rapidly. And so it's not millions of years as the secular geologists say, no, the fossils scream very young age. The fossils scream rapid, catastrophic judgment and all over the world. I mean, look at the volcanic layers we find in the geologic record. They are humongous compared with the volcanic eruptions that we see today. The scale was so much bigger in the past. We don't see we don't see layers being spread across continents today. We see little bitty local floods. And God promised he'd never send another event like Noah's flood. But he said, be warned, there will be scoffers who will come in the last days who will say, they will be willing and ignorant. They will say that all things continue the way they are today. In the past, they've been the same as what they are today. And that's exactly what the geologists say. And he says, they, God says, they are willingly ignorant that, that God created and that he judged by a global flood. Amen. And that brings up a really interesting point, too, and I'm glad that you actually brought this up, because the more that we look at it, science confirms the Bible. And, Absolutely. And, and I mean, my, my whole deal is quantum physics. I love quantum physics, and the more that I research that, the more I find it's not just... Um, it's not just uh, supporting my opinions about the Bible, it's supporting the Bible. So how, I, I, know, um, I know a topic that you've talked a lot about too are uh, fossils, the dating of the earth, and the Grand Canyon. Uh, what, what can the Grand Canyon tell us about things like the age of the earth and the accuracy of the Bible, and why is there so much contention around the Grand Canyon? Well, the C Grand Canyon is a, so a showpiece for evolutionary geology. It's in all the textbooks. I mean, I was taught about the Grand Canyon when I was in, in geology school. And so it was a delight for me to go to visit the Grand Canyon and start to look at the evidence in the Grand Canyon that is exactly the opposite to what the textbooks say. And, and that's why there's the contention. The Grand Canyon is a place where the rock layers are exposed to view, view on such a massive scale. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no other canyon like it. And you, you, can, you can walk from layers that are uh, early in the history of the Earth that we would, would say go back to the time of creation. You can walk through all the flood layers and you can walk higher and higher beyond the North Grand Canyon up through Zion National Park to Bryce Canyon National Park and you will find the layers that go all the way through the flood up into the present time. And so it's a showpiece of Earth history. And therefore it's a showpiece for the flood. And uh, we go there to point out the evidence for the flood. Uh, for example, um, not only do we, uh, I mention some of the layers that we find there that we can trace right across the continent. Um, one of the sandstone layers at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, we find it all, all across North America, all across North Africa, all the way to Southern Israel. <coughs> The chalk beds are limestone beds. We don't find them in the Grand Canyon, but we find them all around the world. Limestone beds that are found in the Grand Canyon are found in the Appalachians over in England and right across Europe and, and across to the Himalayas. And so uh, this is why the Grand Canyon is important. We can also, we can also look at um, the dating of rock layers. It's one of the issues that I've been involved in where we've gone and taken rock samples from the Grand Canyon <coughs> That and submitted them to the major dating methods. Now, the geologists have methods called like uranium to decays to lead and potassium that decays to argon and rubidium that decays to strontium. And it's like having a set of hourglasses with different sand in them, but if they all start at zero when the rock forms, they all the sand all forms so that you should expect that any one of those clocks today would give you the same age on the same rock. 
Well, we took the same samples and sent them for testing for each of those clocks, and we got differences by hundreds of millions of years. One basalt layer in the Grand Canyon was, uh, <coughs> by potassium argon, was 4 516 million years old, by rubidium strontium was 1,111 million years old, and by Sumeria neodymium was 1,588 million years old. How could these clocks be so different unless they, they didn't tick at the rate we measure today, they ticked at faster rates in the past. If they ticked at faster rates in the past, there wasn't the hundreds of millions of years, they weren't real hundreds of millions of years. Another interesting thing is that you've also got basalt layers in the far end of the Grand Canyon that are so recent, they flowed down the walls of the canyon. And you can still see the craters there today. And there's evidence that some of the Native Americans saw some of those eruptions. Those basalts give you exactly the same rubidium strontium age as the oldest basalts at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. The answer is they came from the same source. The rubidium strontium is a measure of the chemistry of the source, not the age of the rocks. Wow, that, that is absolutely amazing and, and truly phenomenal, again, how science confirms the Bible. Uh, Dr. Snelling, I want to thank you so much for uh, talking with me. And, uh, and all the I, best. All the best to your, to your listeners. And uh, we welcome you to come here and see the ark and see the evidence for yourself that God's word is true from the very beginning. Amen. Thank you so much. Pleasure. All right, riveting interview. Um, now, because of the length of this show, we had to cut some of the interview. So if you want the full extended interview, go to youtube.com slash into the multiverse, and uh, you'll actually find a playlist there that says extended interviews, where we have all the extended in interviews. Anytime we interview somebody uh, through Skype or, or something in the field like that, usually we have more material than we can air. So we, uh, we post them on YouTube so you have access to the entire interview. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, fascinating stuff. Science really is important in Christianity. It is. It is. And we say it a lot <laughs> and we will continue to say it. There's nothing to be afraid of with science. Exactly. And science is not made up by man. It is made by God. He mm -hmm. created everything. It, science is the observation of his creation. That's right. That is all it means. Uh, people have interpreted things differently mm -hmm. and have come up with their own hypothesis mm -hmm. of how things are created. Um, but evolution, evolution and, things, and, like and that. things like that. When you actually look at the science, um, it screams it, creation. It, it really does. You know, when, when you look at the science unbiasedly, and of course, you know, I, we are biased because we're Christians, yes. you know, we're, we're biased, but, but when you actually do look at the evidence, it, it, it just time and time again screams that there's a creator. There's just uh, too many things that are in so much detail yeah. that it, it, it just looking at it, it is too much to be an accident. Yeah, yeah, very true. Well, we could go on and on about this, uh, but we are all out of time already. Uh, so again, if people want to find us online, where can they go? If you want to find us, uh, check us out, youtube.com forward slash into the multiverse. So go to skywatchtv.com. Go down on the right-hand side. You'll scroll down. You'll see a picture of Josh and I. If you click on that, it will take you right to our YouTube channel. Or if you have Roku, check us out on Roku under the Skywatch TV channel. Absolutely. Well, this has been an absolute blast. Um, for, for you at home, if you want to send in questions or uh, comments, show ideas even, you can email Email me at jpeck at skywatchtv.com and uh, we'll be happy to take a look at what you have to say and, and consider it. So all that being said, uh, until next time, take care and God bless. Could there exist ancient mysteries that have never been unlocked? Are there secrets waiting thousands of years to be uncovered? Are there hidden keys that can transform your life into one of joy, victory, success, fulfillment, and blessing? Imagine if you could have a treasure chest that contained ancient mysteries, the secrets of the ages, the answers to our most enduring questions, and the keys to transforming your life. This is what you'll get in the Book of Mysteries by Jonathan Kahn author of the New York Times bestsellers, The Harbinger, and The Mystery of the Shemitah. As you open up the Book of Mysteries, you will be transported on a journey through a desert 
to encounter a man known only as the teacher, who will take you on an odyssey to mountaintops, caverns, encampments of tent dwellers and oil-lit chambers of scrolls, ancient books and mysterious vessels, to open the mysteries of the age and your life. Unlock such mysteries as the portal, the mystery of the eighth day, the Maccabean blueprint, the bridegroom's visitation, the seven mysteries of the age, and much more. Enter a one-year odyssey with 365 different mysteries, one for every day of the year. Begin your journey, open up the treasures, unlock the mysteries, and change your life with The Book of Mysteries by Jonathan Kahn. Available where all books are sold. Jonathan Kahn, the best-selling author of The Harbinger and Mystery of the Shemitah, brings his brand new book to Skywatch TV. The Book of Mysteries, officially released September 6th. It's a story, a journey, and a daily devotional like no other. And when you order The Book of Mysteries from Skywatch TV, we'll include The Mystery of the Shemitah, Two Jonathan Kahn DVDs, The Six Heavenly Entities, and The Cosmic Bride and Bridegroom. Two free promotional gift books, and a one-year subscription to the new Skywatch TV magazine. It's a total value of more than $100, yours for just $25. Or you can order a 10-pack, 10 copies of all the books and DVDs, gifts for your friends. Total value of more than $1,000, yours for just $199. This offer is only available from Skywatch TV. Order the Jonathan Kahn Book of Mysteries bundle today by calling toll-free 844-750-4985. That's 844-750-4985. Or log on to skywatchtvstore.com. Most American families are just 72 hours away from disaster. Here at Skywatch TV, we hope we can help avoid that. I have been given permission to tell about this massive deal. There's one packet where you get one of each of these, breakfast and entree buckets, and again, 25 years uh, shelf life. With that, you will get 15 of these Wise Fire packets. You'll get one of this water bottle. It will filter 99.9% .9 of the impurities out of your water. Also, you will get for free this awesome auto kit. Now, there's another package. There, there are two more packages. The second package, you get three of each bucket you pay for those and you get the auto kit free you get the wise fire free and you get two of these bottles there's a third deal you won't believe this one you get six of each of these you get the auto kit free you get the wise fire free you get two bottles guess what else you get the mac daddy Ooh. 50 gallon water storage container if the electric grid goes down one of these is going to come very handy. Three packages for preparedness. One that feeds a family of six for a month. One that feeds a family of six for three months. And one that feeds a family of six for half a year. And of course, that includes the 50-gallon water tank. And with each package, we'll include free, the Everyday Gourmet Cooking with Long-Term Food Storage, a $50 value. You'll find all of those deals online, the Wise Food Preparedness Specials at SkywatchTVStore.com.